Earlier this evening, a major multi-vortex tornado moved through central Oklahoma. Reed Timmer was on that storm and got some dramatic footage. Let's review some of the data and see what happened. First, maybe a quick look at the satellite data. So you're going to watch this area right here. We had the dry line extending from about Great Bend through about Lawton and down to around Abilene. Later in the afternoon, we had those cells get going. You can see some elevated cumulus back here south of Childress. Those moved over to the Frederick and Altus area, and a little bit further to the east, we had deep convection go up around uh, Chickasha, maybe down the uh, I-44 turnpike. And you can see one of the cells on the south side of that complex does become dominant. So that's going to be that area right there. That's going to be the storm that produced that tornado. A quick check of the radar imagery at uh, 7.16 p.m. shows classic supercell right there over Blanchard. And I'm going to peel away those tornado warnings. We don't need to worry about those. Obviously, there was a tornado on that storm. Switch over to the storm relative velocity and doesn't show a whole lot. Some strong outbounds. Got to keep in mind the radar's up in this area right here. We're observing it from northeast to southwest. However, this zone right here, that's going to be about 73 knots out. So we step forward and kind of watch this come together. That's going to be right here, just south of Blanchard. Let me switch over to the base reflectivity. Definitely a hook emerging from that storm. And if we roll that forward a little bit further, we zoom in. Now we're getting down to the street level data starting to get some inbounds and strong outbounds. So we're starting to form a circulation right there. And gradually, that's going to be a tight couplet right there, about three miles southeast of Blanchard. And that's where things really start to come together. So right there, I think that's our first TVS. That's going to be about 7.32 PM. And that's going to be about two and a half miles west southwest of Cole. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. And I'm most concerned about this little subdivision right here. Here's a closer look at that area, the town of Cole, right there. And this little subdivision, this little exurb, that's where a lot of the damage probably occurred. So as far as streets, 260th Street, Lazy Drive, Autumn Lane, Alpine, Ash, and uh, Birch Lane. And yes, you probably are hearing frogs in the background. We are east of Dallas and it's April and there's been humidity, so they are really going at it. All right, so very strong couplet right there. Going through that uh, subdivision, I've got uh, like about 50 in and about 50 out. So about the whole time I've seen about 100, 140 knots of gate gate shear. There it is around uh, 736 p.m. Now it's located right here. I'm going to kind of keep the cursor right where I think the tornado was. And you can kind of see the track right there southwest of coal. And now we're up to about 7.42 p.m. passing just south of that town. And it kind of reorganizes right there about 7.47 p.m. And gradually it shifts on up to the northeast. And we see it start to weaken just a little bit around 7.59 p.m. A lot of those velocities start to fall apart. So that uh, river wind, I think, casino is right there. That's going to be about two miles southwest. We had another circulation I was watching further down, about six miles to the southeast. Again, this is about eight o'clock. I'm going to back up a little bit. You can see it was a little bit stronger earlier. There was some concern that was going to develop and possibly move towards Noble or Slaughterville or East Norman. But fortunately, that did not quite come together. So this little measure right here, if I go from one part of the couplet to the other, that's going to be about two and a half miles. So we're seeing the meso but that's going to be about 70 knots a shear across those two miles. So we were kind of flirting with danger right there as it drifted south of Noble. And then gradually we get up to about 8.17 p.m. and the velocities disperse. And that brings us up to the current time as we record this. Looks like maybe a little bit of reorganization about, uh, it's going to be around 144th Street Southeast. 
that's Highway 9 up there near Lake Thunderbird. And there may be a little bit of reorganization taking place. Yeah, that's the last frame. And it's still got a hook right there. I'm going to drop a dot right in the center of that vortex. And that's not quite a TVS, but it is some significant shear. So that's going to be continuing to track to the east-northeast. And for updates, you should probably take a look at some other channels because this is a recording. But it does look like it is strengthening at this time. And as far as its location, it does have access to undisturbed air from the south. The only thing that might concern me a little bit is I know that moisture wedge is a little bit narrow. So not all of that air is going to be favorable. I've not really kept up with all the data, so I'm not really able to clarify that too much but let me just go back in there there is still a danger so Tecumseh down to Macomb and Tribby those are areas I would be watching very closely this is pretty close to my old house which was up in this area near Lake Thunderbird some of you probably remember taking forecast school classes there years ago anyway yeah that's going to be the storm where we're at right now and hopefully that fills you in on exactly what happened and we had a few developments while I was recording and setting up the files you can see that supercell as it tracks eastward it produced what looks like a little debris ball south of uh, the old country boy store this was a hard hit area back in 2010 and this is just a little bit south of there and it looks like towards the end of that sequence it probably fell apart then we had this other supercell it had its own hook i haven't kept track of what that was doing but let's switch over to the velocity take that all the way back yeah that's about where i left you let me zoom in and we can see that circulation moved out to here and it diminished and then it reorganized kind of in this area right there that's getting out towards 180th Street, I think. And this is uh, 8.50 p.m. Looks pretty strong, looking at uh, 92 in and 83 out. So very likely, I would call that tornado damage right there. And that tracks over to the county line into the uh, next county where Tecumseh is. Uh, forgot the name of the county, but by the time it gets out there, yeah, it goes through some dissipation and reorganization and that brings us up to the current time still that looks like a tvs right there so there's going to be a lot of tracks for the survey crew to be going through tomorrow let me see what happened up in norman because that storm looked pretty potent as well let's see that's going to be about uh, 8 42 p.m not really seeing a couplet in that That's probably a circulation right there that's going to be over the uh, Alameda Bridge on Lake Thunderbird. Doesn't look all that tight, although we are very close to the radar. And uh, we can go up to the, the next tilt that's always advisable at those close ranges. And still looks a little bit spread out. So I'm not 100% sure that that did anything. There's a little circulation right there on, uh, I think, Red Rock Road. Rock Creek. All right. So anyway, hopefully that's the end of what we had today. So I'm going to get this uh, posted and uploaded. Hope you enjoyed it, or at least hope it was informative. Take care, and we will see you on Friday's show. Bye-bye.